Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be a Bible study on the two, two, two Sauls, S-A-U-L. Actually, there was at least three Sauls in the Bible. The first one was a son of, well, of the lineage of Esau, Edom. But the Sauls that I'm talking about is Saul, the first king of Israel. And then the other Saul is who Saul of Tarsus, who became known as the Apostle Paul. We're going to look at some um, contrasts and comparisons. But uh, before we do that, I think we need to take a look at the children of Israel. King Saul and Apostle Saul, who became Paul, were of the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin was the last born son of Jacob, who God changed his name to Israel. The word Jacob means supplanter, or, you know, like a trickster. But Israel means rules or prince with God. Prince of God, pr prince with God, rules with God, something along that line. Now, you had Abraham, who had Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael was the father of many of the Arabs. God blessed him for Abraham's sake. But he said, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Ishmael was not to be the chosen seed. And then Isaac had two children, Esau, who was rejected, read Romans 9, read Malachi 1, and Jacob, who was changed his name to Israel. Now, Jacob went to his uh, family, Laban, who had two daughters, Rachel and Leah. And he had children by both of them and their handmaids, which I guess are like, you know, like servants. But uh, knowing how things were back in the old days, they're probably more like sisters, I guess. I don't know for a fact, but, uh, but uh, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, had... Uh, I think, yeah, 12 sons and one daughter, Dinah. And no, they didn't make the song about Dinah. Dinah, blow your horn? No, different Dinah. So, what was the order of their births? Now, just for a fun fact, Jacob uh, loved Rachel, but he wasn't crazy about Leah. Reuben was Jacob's firstborn. He was the son of Leah. Now, he got tricked into marrying the oldest girl, which was Leah. I mean, he was supposed to get Rachel for his daughter, I mean, his wife. Um, now, that's a whole Bible study in and of itself. But the uh, brother, Laban, he uh, tricked him, uh, you know, on the wedding night. You know, it was dark and put Leah in the bedroom and then morning light comes and he's like, hey, wait a minute, you're not, you're not who I, uh, you know, was supposed to get married to. 
And then he complained, and he, he's like, oh, hey, don't you know it's our custom? The, you can't marry the youngest before the oldest. So, basically, um, he got a two-for-one deal. He got tricked. That's what uh, Jacob means, supplanter, trickster, right? So, Reuben was Jacob's firstborn son. Son of Leah. He didn't want Leah. He wanted Rachel. And then Simeon was next. Son of Leah. Levi. Third son. Leah. The not-so-loved. And then Judah. Son of Leah. And then for a while, she quit having children. So she had four, four boys. Matter of fact, they were two of the most important tribes in Israel. Levi, of which Moses and Aaron were Levites, they were the priests. They were the ones that God was going to rule um, the nation of Israel through. They were the ones that were to give everybody the law. That's what Moses did. He was given the law by the Lord and gave the law to Israel on behalf of the Lord. Judah was to be the tribe, the civil rulers, the kings. All right, then, uh, number five was Dan, who was born from Bilhah, which was Rachel's handmaid, or her servant, so since uh, Rachel wasn't having any kids, she says, all right, go into my handmaid and she'll have a child for me in my place. Then he had another child, son, named Naphtali. Naphtali, depending upon how you know. Through uh, Rachel's handmaid. Well, then he had Gad which was the child Jacob had with uh, the handmaid of Leah. Her name was Zilpah. Yeah, I know these names get kind of weird. And then Asher came from Zilpah, handmaid of Leah. And then Issachar was, uh, and then Leah had another kid. Zebulun. So here it is. He's got 10 sons already. Boy, Jacob was really busy, huh? And then Dinah was uh, Jacob's daughter. He only had one daughter. Guess who the mother was? Leah, the, the one that uh, Jacob wasn't crazy about. Well, then Jacob goes in unto Rachel, his beloved. God had pity on her, and she had a son, Joseph. And then Rachel had one other son. She called him Benjamin. Benjamin means... Um, the son of my right hand. You know, what is it, like 90, 95% of the people in the world are right-handed? So, you know, Jesus sits on the right hand of power of the Father. You know, being on somebody's right hand is like, well, it's better to be a right-winger than a left-winger, at least on Judgment Day, right? Left-wingers, uh, communists, right? So it means son of my right hand. Um, Rachel actually died during childbirth having Benjamin. And she named him Ben-Onai, which means son of trouble or my trouble. Ben means son. But Jacob renamed him Benjamin, which means, you know, son of my right hand. 
So, that is a lot of kids. He was really busy. Uh, two wives and two concubines, I guess you could put it. For 13 kids in all. But our main focus is on Benjamin. Because that's where Saul, the king, and Saul, who became Paul, the apostle, came from. All right, let's go take a look and see what we got. Now, the first time Saul is mentioned in the Bible is in Genesis chapter uh, 36. And he was of... All right, Genesis chapter 36. We'll just read a couple verses here. Verse 1. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Uh, just a little thing here. The you-know-whos and the black Hebrews and the black nation of Islam. Perhaps you've heard of Louis Farrakhan. They teach that the uh, Roman Catholic Church and basically all white people, except for the you-know-whos over uh, in the Middle East, and I'm not talking about the Arabs, uh, they teach that we are Esau Edom, that we are the cursed people that God is going to destroy. And if you take a look at the... Um, What's coming with the uh, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast, the time of Jacob's trouble, that's how it's going to play out. If uh, white people are the children of Israel, we are going to be the recipients of the time of Jacob's trouble. And that fits their narrative quite well. That... Uh, the Messiah is going to come and destroy Esau Edom, which they say we are. Now, one group is right and the other group is wrong. And uh, in Joshua 24 and verse 15, Joshua was saying to the people, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood. Think about the giants, people. That was on the other side of the flood. They served the gods, the fallen angels, the fathers of the giants. That's who they served. God got so disgusted with that in Genesis 6 that he flooded the earth. Personally, I believe it was the whole earth. But some people say it was a local flood. I, you know, I, I'm not going to argue or disfellowship with somebody over that, you know. But, you know, if it wasn't, if the whole earth wasn't flooded, why didn't God just tell Noah to move? You know, instead he says, build an ark. I mean, you could have just said, you know, well, the whole earth isn't going to be flooded. Just go to Mount Everest, the highest mountain, and uh, hang out there until, you know, I drown everybody else. And then you can come down or, you know, move somewhere else. But uh, that's not how it happened. So what can I tell you? And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, which were on the other side of, of the flood, or the god of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But, as for me, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So, here it is. You see, Satan has been planning this for many years. Now, I honestly think when their Messiah comes, he's going to destroy 
the Vatican. I That's just my guess. I could be wrong. But uh, they're expecting the uh, us to be destroyed. And what can I tell you? I, I think they're going to wipe out Christians. Anybody that follows Christ. All right, so let's get going here. All right, let's go back to... Uh, Genesis 36, verse 1. Now, these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. Esau took his wives of the daughter of Canaan, the Canaanites. They're, just because God destroyed everything in the flood didn't mean that there was a second crop of giants. I mean, what do you think Goliath was that King uh, David faced? On behalf of King Saul. Excuse me. King Saul. There were giants after the flood. And not all the Canaanites were giants. But I bet you they were hot looking babes. To put it in modern English. So Esau. Verse 2. Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan. Adah the daughter of Elon the Hittite. And Aholibamah. I guess I'm pronouncing it right. The daughter of Ana, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. So he took, they were, you know, the Hittites and the Hivites were just two different Canaanite tribes. Now this is telling you all the children of Esau, Edom. Skip down to verse 37. And Samuel died and Saul and Saul of Rehoboth by the river reigned in his stead. The reigned as in ruled, not, not water falling from the sky. Verse 38. And Saul died, and Baal Hanam, the son of Akbor, reigned in his stead. That's a funny name right there. B A A L, Baal or Baal, depending, I've heard it both ways. Baal Hanan, the son of Ak Akbor, reigned in his stead. When you see somebody with a name of B A A L in their name, it means they serve. Baal is, a, it was a generic name for Lord, a false god. Uh, they did call the God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Baal, for a while. But it became, the word Baal, B-A-A-L, became so associated with Satanism, the Lord says, don't call me that anymore. Don't call me that anymore. I don't want to hear it. So, All right, so let's take a look at something here. Now, keep this in mind. In Numbers 26, verse 41, we read, These are the sons of Benjamin after their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred. Forty and five thousand. Now, you're talking back, you know, years before Christ was even born. Probably, probably around uh, 2,000 years before Christ. You got 45,000 people. How many children can they have? Now, there was a time when Benjamin got whittled down to a very, very small group. And we're going to cover that. That's why I'm mentioning 45,600 families are the sons of Benjamin. All right. Now, remember that uh, when Israel went into Egypt, 
uh, there arose a new Pharaoh that didn't know Joseph, enslaved everybody, and then they had the first Passover, and everybody, the Lord led, led, led them out of Egypt. And then Moses was their leader. And Moses did something that displeased the Lord. So he could see the promised land, but he wasn't allowed to cross over into the promised land. So he died. Well, afterward, you had Joshua. Joshua was the sixth book in the Bible. Now, after Joshua died, well, then you come to the book of Judges. So let's read Judges 17.6. In those days, there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Judges 21.25. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Uh, sounds like the uh, satanic uh, Bible thing, you know. Uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. In other words, do, what, do whatever you want to do. And that's, that's the law. They did whatever they wanted to do, whatever was right in their own eyes. Oh, you want to kill your neighbor and steal his cattle? Go for it. You know, that's, that's doing what's right in your own eyes. So the book of Judges, you know, if uh, you could get pre-trippers to read book of Judges, it might actually put a spark under them to kindle a fire. I don't know. Of course, uh, they're so brainwashed with dispensational theology. See, dispen to di dispensation comes from a word, the root word that means dispense. You know, you've heard of a soap dispenser. Well, it means to give something. Well, Moses was dispensed. Moses dispensed the law. God gave it to Moses. Moses gave it to Israel. And Christ dispensed us with grace. Christ dispensed unto us grace. What's the Old Testament? Law. What's the New Testament? Grace. There's only two dispensations, law and grace, the old and the new, the old and the covenant and the new test covenant, the Old Testament, the New Testament. But of course, the um, pre-tribbers are always, you know, well, there's at least seven dispensations. So even if you show them the book of Judges, they'll, oh, well, that's for the, you know, that's for the, that's for them. That's not for us. So don't pay, don't read the Old Testament. It, you know, that's not for us. Yeah. Well, the thing was, when everybody was evil, the Lord sent oppressors to punish Israel. So let's take a look at that. Now, if you want to know who the judges were, Perhaps you've heard of Deborah. Deborah was a prophetess and a judge. She was a ruler. Uh, you know, if the Lord cannot find a man with a heart as pure to judge and rule his people, he will, can and will, and has sent a, wo a woman. Um, I mean, Deborah was a prophetess and a judge, which is the ruler. Perhaps you've heard of Samson. Yeah, he was one of the judges in Israel. How come Hollywood, every time they do a movie, it's about Hercules, not Samson? Because they're satanic. That's why. Hollywood is satanic. If they were really the, the uh, chosen people, well, they'd be doing things about Samson. Who was Hercules? Hercules was the uh, son of Zeus. Uh, he couldn't keep his pants on when it came to human women. Yeah. You know, so Hercules was a half 
God, half human. Oh, gee, where have I read of that before? Uh, Genesis 6, you know, the reason of the flood, you know. And then people tell me, oh, I, I just, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's possible. Angels, angels can't have sex. That's in the Bible. No, it's not. Jesus said that when, uh, that in the kingdom will be as the angels in heaven. You know, well, there'll be no marriage. We'll be as the angels in heaven. Well, guess what? Not all the angels are in heaven. They, some of them were kicked out. Yeah, they always leave out those last two words, in heaven. Well, you know, there's not going to be any marriage in heaven. So we're going to be like the angels. Well, not all the angels are in heaven, buddy. So here's the deal. There was no king in Israel. Moses had died. Joshua died. Now we're in the time of the, the judges. Samson. Deborah. And there's a bunch of others too, too but I, I just don't remember them all. So, let's take a look at something real quick. Judges chapter 2, verse 1. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers and I said I will never break my covenant with you see God said he's not gonna break his covenant with you they broke the covenant with him you know what's a covenant you know you go to the bank and say hey I want to buy a new car um, well of course the Bible says not to play around with usury but just using this as an example. All right, let's say you went to a rich uncle and he's not going to charge you any money, uh, interest. You say, hey, uncle, rich uncle, hey, can you, uh, I want to buy a new car. He's like, okay, how much is it? Oh, I don't know, $22,000. All right, um, I'll make a deal with you. You pay me $500 a month every month for whatever it is, uh, 22000 That would be, um, I don't know, whatever it is. I don't want to look it up on the, but uh, you pay me $500 a month or whatever, $300, $250 a month, whatever it is for X number of years. And at the end, the car's yours. But I'm going to make a deal with you. If you miss two payments in a row, I repossess the car and sell it. That's, uh, that's, like a, that's a contract. But that's basically what a covenant is. God made a contract with Israel. God always keeps his end of the bargain. Israel, nah, not so much. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And ye shall make no league. Don't make a deal. No league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down, ye shall throw down their altars. See, they're practicing Satanism. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Now, I want you to think about something here. This angel of the Lord, he says, you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you not done this? Is this Christ before he had uh, human flesh, before he was uh, incarnated into the womb of Mary? Because he's talking in the first person here. He said, I will never break my covenant with you. Who made the covenant with Israel? God did. 
not an angel. Do you understand what I'm saying? He says, but ye have not obeyed my voice. See, this is not some mere angel. This has got to be Christ, God the Son, before he became in human flesh. It has to be. If you don't understand it, read verse 1 and 2 again. I mean, he's talking in the first person for God. But it says he's an angel, an angel of the Lord. He says, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. An angel didn't swear the land unto the fathers. God did. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, read this a few times. If you know, read it half a dozen times until it comes, you know. This angel of the Lord is speaking in as he's God. So I think, uh, and the word angel just means messenger. So, you shall make no league, no covenant, no contract, no deals with the inhabitants of the land. You shall throw down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides. And their God shall be a snare or a trap. What's a snare? A trap. And their gods shall be a snare unto you. All these people that are getting into witchcraft, they're in big trouble. Verse 4. And it shall come to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words unto all the children of people that the people lifted up their voice and wept. That's what I'd like to see happen to America. And uh, it's a good chance it's going to have to. Verse 5. Uh, okay, Joshua's not dead yet because we're in uh, Judges 2, but Joshua's going to die real soon. Oh, uh, okay, here we go. All right, so Lord chided the people for, hey, you guys have been messing up. So the people lifted up their voice and wept, and they called the name of that place Bochum, and they sacrificed there unto the Lord. And when Joshua had let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders that all outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. Verse 8. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being an hundred and ten years old. All right, so Joshua's gone. And they buried him in the border of his, his inheritance in timnath in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gash, Gash. And also all the generations were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Oh, yeah. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Balaam, Satanism, people. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods of the gods of the people that were found, uh, that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal or Baal and Ashtaroth. You know what's another name for Ashtaroth? Isis, um, the Shekinah, Easter, Ashtaroth. She's the female goddess. Ashtaroth. Goddess worshipped. Perhaps you've heard of Gaia. G-A-I-A. -A. They call it, you know, Mother Earth. 
Uh, the Bible doesn't call her Mother Earth or Gaia, but uh, the witches do. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And I wonder if Ashtaroth is Baal's wife. Could be. I'm not exactly 100% sure. And the thing is, you got all these different uh, splinter groups into Satanism and witchcraft and what have you, and they got different names and whatever. I'm sure um, one group has, uh, I think it's Samael, which is supposed to be like a general of Satan's, and he was married to Lilith. Uh, if you start studying uh, the J religion, you'll hear of Lilith. Perhaps some of you have watched, uh, what was it, Cheers and, and Frasier. Uh, he was married to Lilith or dating Lilith or whatever. I didn't watch that junk. But, um, you know, you go over to people's houses and what are they doing? They're watching television. Lilith Stern, nice Jewish girl. Verse 13, and they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. Oh, yeah. They served the devil and the goddess. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. What happens when you leave a, a, a raw steak outside in the sun in the summer? It gets spoiled. You can't eat it. It's no good. You have to throw it away. And he delivered him them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them and he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could not stand uh, so they could not any longer stand before their enemies whithersoever they went out the hand of the Lord was against them for evil as the Lord had said and as the Lord had sworn unto them and they were greatly distressed oh yeah Guess what, people? That's coming now. We got millions of these heathen aliens coming to our land. They're going to be our enemies. They are our enemies. The politicians, what do you think they're doing? You know, they're not bringing these people in to help us. Revelation 12, the flood of the dragon, that is where we are today. Verse 16, Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges, which delivered them out of, those, of the, out of the hands of those that spoiled them. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, but went a whoring after other gods, and bowed themselves unto them, they turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord, but they did not so. Wow. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They cease not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. You see, people, what do you think? What do you think the tribulation is for? It's to bring people to repentance. And it's not, you know, the, I hate to even call these people preachers and pastors and Bible teachers, but, you know, God's going to let his people suffer and make them make a choice. Who are they going to serve? The God of this world or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Are they going to buckle under persecution? Or are they going to stand firm? Are they going to take the mark? Or are they going to lose their head? And I'm not sure whatever mark 
uh, whatever form the mark is in. But these people are going to oppress God's people horribly. We already got a guy that's scheduled to be um, sworn in as president, and he's already admitting to be in a, a Zai Ambi and admits that immigration's a good thing and not people from Europe. No, people from everywhere but Europe. So, you know, they're here. They're here to take your jobs, your land, your houses, your sons, your daughters, and your lives. They're going to be sorely oppressed. And God wants his children to cry out unto him in repentance. Everybody did that which was right in their own eyes. I've heard people say that grace means we could do anything we want. They turn grace into a license to sin, which is a heresy. But then you got the people that say, well, you need to keep the law. Well, that's also a heresy, you know? But, uh, but the Bible says that if you're led by the Spirit, there is no law to those that are led of the Spirit. Are you led of the Spirit? Am I being led of the Spirit? Verse 20. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because that this people have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice. Yep, they broke the contract, and they don't listen. These children don't listen to me. I'm going to spank them good. Verse 21. I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died, that through them I may prove Israel, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein, as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. See, God would raise up oppressors, people to persecute his people. They would repent, cry out to the Lord, follow the Lord, and the Lord would take them out of the way. And then after a period of time, they got fat and happy and forgot all about it. And then the Lord would send other oppressors unto them. I, what do you think happened with Jerusalem under Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon? I mean, a third, I think it was a third, a third of the people in Jerusalem were killed. Killed. And then uh, Nebuchadnezzar took like a third into captivity. Uh, my estimates might be wrong. But uh, a lot of people died, and a lot of people were taken into, um, you know, they were, they became uh, captives, slaves. And after 70 years, the Medes and the Persians came, and uh, Babylon collapsed, and then the Medes and the Persians let uh, Judah return to Jerusalem. God spanked them good. Now, let me tell you what, 70 years, there's not going to be very many people alive that saw Babylon's army come and destroy Jerusalem and take them into captivity and then return. I, you know, not many people. You figure if you were like 12 years old, when uh, you went into captivity, you were 82 by the time you returned. At least, 
you know? So there wasn't many people around. And God proved his people in Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the three Hebrews that went into the, the um, furnace. And Daniel, that would, you know, lion's den. Not many people, let me tell you what, not many. All right, so let's read a story. Uh, turn to Judges 19, chapter 19 and verse 1. We're going to read chapters 19 and 20. So, you know, that was the cycle. People were uh, would get fat and happy, forget all about the Lord. The Lord would send uh, somebody to spank Israel, oppressors. Um, they would be... They would turn in repentance, cry out to the Lord. The Lord would deliver them. They'd get fat and happy. You know, it was a cycle. And what do you think happened to America? America's been on the down slope since, uh, I would dare say, since the Civil, before the Civil War. This has got to be like the fourth generation. Uh, yeah, it's got to be. So, you know, it's just, God's, this is it. This is it. You got, ugh. America's going to get spanked big time. All right, Judges 19.1. And it came to pass in those days that there was no king, no king in Israel. See, the Lord wanted to be the king, but the people didn't want him. Nope, we want to do that what is right in our eyes. We want to do, you know, do what you want to do. Make your own dreams come true. Oh, yeah. I was that for many years. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim, who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. Now, the Levites were the tribe of the, uh, the priests. They were the ones that served the Lord. And Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Judah. Bethlehem was in Judah. You know, there was uh, 12 tribes, and they had 12 areas um, where they were given land, right? And Bethlehem was in Judah. Where was Christ born? Bethlehem. Verse 2, and his concubine played the whore against him. Ah, okay. So, all right, so, and his concubine played the whore against him and went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah, and was there four whole months. And her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her again having a servant with him and a couple of asses. And she brought him unto her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him, and he abode with him three days. So they did eat and drink and lodge there. And it came to pass on the fourth day, when they uh, arose early in the morning, that he rose up to depart. The damsel's father said unto his son-in-law, Comfort thine heart with a morsel of bread, and afterward go your way. And they sat down and did eat and drink both of them together. For the damsel's father had said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night, and let thine heart be merry. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here, but I think he's trying to be real nice to this guy so that he doesn't want to punish his daughter for being playing the whore. I don't know. That's kind of what I get out of this. But, you know, I, you might have a different idea that's more valid than mine. But that's, you know, how I see it. Um, be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night, and let thine heart be merry. And when the man rose up to depart, his father-in-law urged him, therefore he lodged there again. 
And he arose early in the morning on the fifth day to depart. And the damsel's father said, Comfort thine heart, I pray thee. And they tarried until afternoon, and they did eat both of them. And when the man rose up to depart, he and his concubine and his servant, his father-in-law, the damsel's father, said unto him, Behold, now the day draweth toward evening. I pray you, tarry all night. Behold, the day groweth to an end. Lodge here, and that thine heart may be merry. And tomorrow get you early on your way, that thou mayest go home. But the man would not tarry that night. But he rose up and departed, and came over against Jebus, which is Jerusalem. And there were with him two asses saddled. His concubine also was with him. And when they were by Jebus, which is Jerusalem, right? Uh, the day was far spent, and the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn in unto the city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. Uh, they call it Jebus. Uh, it was a city of the Jebusites. Uh, if I remember correctly, the Jebusites were a part of the Canaanites. I could be wrong about that, but I think the Jebusites were Canaanites. I'm not sure. And his master said unto him, We will not turn hither into the city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gilbeah. Gibeah? So, yeah, they're strangers. They're not Israel. They're Jebusites. And he... Uh, and he said unto a servant, Come and let us draw near to one of these places to lodge all night in Gibeah or in Ramah. And they passed on and went their way, and the sun went down upon them when they were by Gibeah, which belongs, which belongeth to Benjamin. Remember, we're talking about Benjamin on this Bible study. So here it is, they're in the land of Benjamin. And they turned aside thither to go in into lodging. Gibeah, and when he went in, he sat him down in a street of the city, for there was no man that took them into his house to lodging. And behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at evening, which was of Mount Ephraim, and he sojourned in Gibeah. But the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou, and whence comest thou? You know, where are you going, and where are you coming from? Verse 18. And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim. From thence I am, and I went to Bethlehem, Judah. But now I am going to the house of the Lord, and there is no man that receiveth me to house. You know, in other words, there's you know nobody to put me up for the night. Yet there is both straw and provender, provender for our asses, and there is bread and wine also for me and for my handmaid, and for the young man which is with thy servants. There is no want of anything. And the old man said, Peace be with thee. Howsoever let all thine wants lie upon me, only lodge not in the street. So he brought him into his house and gave provender unto the asses, and they washed their feet and did eat and drink. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, Belial is a uh, like, well, let me look it up real quick. I want to give you a perfect definition. Sons of Belial is never nice. No, uh-uh. Belial, noun, as a noun, it means unprofitableness, wickedness. As an adjective, worthless, wicked in a collective sense, wicked men. So, yeah, I wanted to make sure I gave you the uh, real deal. Uh, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Webster was a language scholar and a believer. He knew Hebrew and Greek, the Bible languages. So, uh, yeah, I believe his thing. All right, so now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, 
beset the house roundabout and beat at the door. Sounds like the uh, the uh, people of Sodom that were uh, surrounded Lot's house when the angels came in and they're beating on the door. Hey, bring these guys out. We want to we want to do them. You know, I don't mean to be crude, but that's yeah. And they beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. Yeah, we want to know him, all right, in a carnal, sexual way, right? And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man has come into mine house, do not this folly. Um... Now this, I, e. Verse 24. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now, and humble ye them, and do unto them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine, and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her, and abused her all the night until the morning, and when the day began to spring, they let her go. Uh, did she, how many men gang raped her? And which, uh, did they use the front or the back? For both. Now, I'm not trying to be cruel here or crude, but, um, you know, here it is. They didn't want the woman. They wanted a man. You know, there were sodomites. Uh, ish. I think it's uh, terrible. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the days began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way and behold the woman his concubine had fallen down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold and he said unto her up and let us be going but none answered then the man took her up upon an ass and the man rose up and got him unto his place um, so evidently she died now I don't know if you know it but um, People have died from anal sodomy. People have died. Yeah. Uh, it's vile. So, and when he had uh, him, when he was come into his house, he took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with the bones and into 12 pieces and sent her into all the coasts of Israel. Why 12 pieces? Because he sent her body, her dead body that they had murdered her um, and said, look what these evil, wicked people had done. You know, it was like a, 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 a call to duty, call to action. And it was so that all that saw it said there was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider of it, take advice, and speak your minds. So they had raped her to death. And I don't know how bad this guy felt about all this, but, uh, you know... She liked playing the whore, so maybe he thought he was doing her a favor. I don't know. You know, oh, you you like playing around with a lot of men? Here you go. I'm not saying that's right. I find this extremely disturbing. Uh, I am not saying this is right. But that might have been how he was thinking. I don't know. I don't know what was going through his mind. All right, let's go to 20, chapter 20. 
Then all the children of Israel went out, and the congregation was gathered together as one man from Dan, even to Beersheba, with the land of Gilead, unto the Lord in Mizpah. And the chief of all the people, even of all the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly of the people of God, 400,000 footmen that drew sword. Now the children of Benjamin heard that the children of Israel were gone up to Mizpah. Then said the children of Israel, Tell us, how was this wickedness? And the Levite, the husband of the woman that was slain, answered and said, I came to Gibeah that belongeth to Benjamin, I and my concubine to lodge. And the men of Gibeah rose against me and besat the house round about upon me by night and thought to have slain me and my concubine have they forced that she is dead. And I took my concubine and cut her in pieces and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel for they have committed lewdness, lewdness and folly in Israel. So here it is, they're going to avenge this woman against the men that did this. Verse 7, Behold, ye are all children of Israel, give here your advice and counsel. And all the people arose as one man, saying, We will not any of us go to his tent, neither will we any of us turn into his house. But now this shall be the thing which we will do to Gibeah. We will go up by lot against it. And we will take ten men of a hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel, and a hundred of a thousand, and a thousand of ten thousand, to fetch victual for the people that they may do when they come to Gibeah of Benjamin, according to all the folly that they have wrought in Israel. Uh, a lot of people don't understand it, but... Uh, Wickedness brings curses upon the land. Why do you think their abortion is legal in the United States? Why do you think they have turned freedom of religion into allowing the Church of Satan and all these satanic organizations? Do you know there was a political party? Um, I forget what year, but it was the Anti-Masonic Party. Yes, there was a party that was actually against the Masonic Lodge. They wanted to totally destroy all the Masonic Lodges in the United States. I don't remember what exactly they were called, but they, they existed. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it curses upon a land. America is cursed. England is cursed. Europe is cursed. For all the wickedness. Now these people were like, you know what? We're not going to put up with this evil wickedness. We're going to get rid of it. All right. So uh, verse 11. So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city, knit together as one man. And the tribes of Israel sent men throughout all the tribe of Benjamin, saying, What wickedness is this? What wickedness is this that is done among you? Now therefore deliver us the men, the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death. That we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. Boy, I'll tell you what, they were serious. You know, if only we had a call for this today, right? that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. But the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah to go out to battle against the children of Israel. So here it is, instead of delivering up these evil, wicked men, they're going to fight for them. Hey, they're our brothers. You know, we're all, you know, we're all one here, you know. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time out of the cities, 20 and 6,000 men which drew sword beside the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered 700 chosen men. 
Among all these people were, there were 700 chosen men, left-handed. Everyone could sling stones at a hair breadth and not miss. In other words, boy, they could, you know, remember David slew Goliath with a stone, with a sling? Well, you got uh, 400, I'm sorry, you got 700 left-handed guys that could sling stones and hit a hair and not miss. And the men of Israel, besides Benjamin, were numbered 400,000 men that drew sword. All these were men of war. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, which of us shall go up first to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. And the children of Israel rose up in the morning and encamped against Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed down to the ground of the Israelites that day 20 and 2,000 men. Wow. And the people, the men of Israel, encouraged themselves and set their battle again in array in the place where they put themselves in array the first day. And the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord unto even, evening, unto even, evening, right? And asked counsel the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? And the Lord said, Go up against him. And the children of Israel came near against the children of Benjamin the second day. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground of the children of Israel. Again, 18,000 men, all these drew the sword. Wow. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of God and wept and sat there before the Lord and fasted, fasted that day until even and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the ark of the covenant of God was there in those days. And Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, you know, Aaron, the brother of Moses, right? And Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? Or shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into thine hand. Ah. Now, they went up twice, didn't succeed. But when they fasted and prayed and prayed and sacrifices and inquired of the Lord, and the Lord says, I will deliver them into thine hand. Fasting and prayer, people, and humbling yourselves goes a long way. And Israel set liars in wait round about Gibeah. I guess they uh, hid themselves round about when it was dark, and then when they came out of the city, they're waiting for them, you know? Verse 30, And the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin on the third day and put themselves in array against Gibeah as at other times. And the children of Benjamin went out against the people and were drawn away from the city. And they began to smite of the people and kill as at other times in the highways of which one goeth up to the house of God and the other to Gibeah in the field about 30 men of Israel. And the children of Israel said, They are smitten down before us as at the first. But the children of Israel said, Let us flee and draw them from the city unto the highways. So um, I'm not a military strategist, but uh, chances are the city had walls. And, you know, here it is. The, uh, they probably had weapons that could shoot down from the walls. But Israel was having a hard time uh, breaching the walls of Benjamin. 
So here it is. They're pretending that they're getting their butts whipped. They're running away from the city. And the children of Benjamin are saying, hey, let's go chase after them. So they're getting them away from their stronghold. And all the men of Israel rose up out of their place and put themselves in array at Baal Tamar, B-A-A-L, there's that satanic God again. And the liars in wait of Israel came forth out of their places, even out of the meadows of Gibeah. So here it is they're in the meadows, you know, which are probably flowers that are knee high. And they're laying down on the ground, no telling how many thousands of them. And there came against Gibeah 10,000 chosen men out of all Israel, and the battle was sore, and they knew not that evil was near them. And the Lord smote Benjamin before Israel, and the children of Israel destroyed of the Be Benjamites that day twenty and five thousand and an hundred men. All these drew the sword. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten, for the men of Israel gave place to the Benjamites, because they trusted unto the liars in wait, uh, in wait, which they had set beside Gibeah. And all the liars in wait hasted and rushed upon Gibeah, and the liars in wait drew themselves along and smote all the city with the edge of the sword. Now there was an appointed sign between the men of Israel and the liars in wait, that they should make a great flame of smoke rise up out of the city. In other words, they're going to burn the city. And when the men of Israel retired in the battle, Benjamin began to smite and to kill of the men of Israel about 30 persons, for they said, Surely they are smitten down before us as in the first battle. But when the flame began to rise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites looked behind them, and behold, the flame of the city ascended up to heaven. And when the men of Israel turned again, the men of Benjamin were amazed, for they saw that evil was come upon them. Therefore they turned their backs before the men of Israel unto the way of the wilderness. But the battle overtook them, and them which came out of the cities they destroyed in the midst of them. So I guess they're, they turned their backs on the Israelites to go try to protect the city, but... Then they got into what's called a pincer movement. You got people in front of you and people in back of you attacking you. Not a good thing. Thus they enclosed the Benjamites round about and chased them and trod them down with ease over against Gibeah toward the sun rising. And there fell of Benjamin 18,000 men. All these were men of valor. And they turned and fled toward the wilderness under the rock of Rimon, and they gleaned of them in the highways five thousand men, and pursued hard unto them unto Gidom, and slew two thousand of them. So that all which fell that day of Benjamin were twenty and five thousand men that drew the sword, all these were men of valor. But six hundred men turned and fled to the wilderness unto the rock Rimon, and abode in the rock Rimon four months. And the men of Israel turned again upon the children of Benjamin and smote them with the edge of the sword, as well the men of every city as the beast. And all that came to hand, also they set on fire all the cities that they came to. All right, let's go to uh, chapter 21. Now the men of Israel had sworn in Mizpah, saying, There shall not any of us give his daughter unto Benjamin to wife. All right, so they said, man, these people are evil. I don't want my daughter to marry these guys. And the people came to the house of God and bowed there till even before God and lifted up their voices and wept sore and said, O Lord God of Israel, why is this come to pass in Israel that there should be today one tribe lacking in Israel? I mean, they're at the point where they had just about wiped out the tribe of Benjamin. Now remember, King Saul, who was king before King David, was of Benjamin. Uh, Paul the Apostle, Benjamin. You know, there's a reason why I do all this stuff. 
and said, O Lord God of Israel, why is this come to pass in Israel that there should be, be today one tribe lacking of, in Israel? You know, oh, there's not going to be 12 tribes. There's going to be 11. And it came to pass on the morrow that the people rose early and built there an altar and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the children said, Who is there among all the tribes of Israel that came not up with the congregation unto the Lord? For they had made a great oath concerning him that came not up to the Lord to Mizpah, saying, He shall surely be put to death. And the children of Israel repented them for Benjamin their brother and said, there is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. How shall we do for wise for them that remain, seeing we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them of our daughters to wives? And they said, What one is there of the tribes of Israel that came not up to Mizpah to the Lord? And behold, there came none to the camp from Jabez Gil Gilead to the assembly. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. For the people were numbered, and behold, there was none of the inhabitants of Jabesh, Jabesh Gilead there. And the congregation sent thither 12,000 men of the valiantest and commanded them, saying, Go and smite the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead with the edge of the sword, with the women and the children. And this is the thing that ye shall do. Ye shall utterly destroy every male and every woman that hath lain by man. So if the ladies were not a virgin, they were in trouble. And they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead 400 young virgins that had known no man by lying with any male. And they brought them unto the camp to Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. And the whole congregation sent some to speak to the children of Benjamin that were in the rock Rimon, and to call peaceably unto them. And Benjamin came again at that time, and they gave them wives, which they had saved alive of the women of uh, Jabesh Gilead, and yet so they sufficed them not. And the people repented them for Benjamin, because that the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. Then the elders of the congregation said, How shall we do for wives for them that remain, seeing the women are destroyed out of Benjamin? And they said, There must be an inheritance for them that be escaped of Benjamin, that a tribe be not destroyed out of Israel. Howbeit we may not give them wives of our daughters, for the children of Israel had sworn, saying, Cursed be he that giveth a wife to Benjamin. Then they said, Behold, there is a feast of the Lord in Shiloh yearly in a place which is on the north side of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goeth up from Bethel to Shechem, and on the south of Lebanon. Therefore they commanded the children of Benjamin, saying, Go and lie in wait in the vineyards, and see and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance and dances, then come ye out of the vineyards and catch you every man his wife, of the daughters of Shiloh, and go to the land of Benjamin. Uh, so here it is, they're going to have to chase after these uh, women that they want for the wives, right? And I heard a saying once that uh, a woman will let a man chase her around until she decides to let him catch her. Uh, I don't know how true that is. Actually, it was a gal that told me that. Verse 22. And it shall be when their fathers or their brethren come unto us to complain that we will say unto them, Be favorable unto them for our sakes, because we reserve not to each man his wife in the war. For ye did not give unto them at this time that ye should be guilty. And the children of Benjamin did so and took them wives according to their number of them that danced whom they caught, and they went and returned unto their inheritance, and repaired the cities and dwelt in them. And the children of Israel departed thence at that time, every man to his tribe and to his family, and they went out from thence, every man to his inheritance. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Oh, yeah. 
So do you realize that Benjamin was almost wiped out? Uh, there's a lot of stories like this in the Old Testament. I just, I kind of cringe. Um, you know, it's like Lot. When Lot, uh, the Sodomites came and wanted to uh, rape the angels and he offered his virgin daughters. I, you know, really, Lot? I was like, oh, here, I got Mr. Mossberg or Mr. Remington. Uh, 12 gauge. You could have some buckshot. Yeah, I'll give you some buckshot. I'll 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 uh I'll give you a hole to play with. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll give you a hole to play with, all right. It's called buckshot, 12 gauge. You know. Uh I guess you could say I'm not real fond of sodomites. They bring curses upon the land. Try to convince that to a pre tripper No. God would never do that for us. Uh, you know, God wouldn't let us suffer. We're, we're his special people. Boy, I'll tell you what. I wonder how many people are going to lose their lukewarm faith when times get rough. I wonder. I really, really, really wonder. Uh, makes me sad. And another thing, people, I, you know, I don't need to be put out new Bible studies. I got a lot of old Bible studies. Uh, on the uh, on my homepage of the YouTube channel, you you know, you click on my name, you go to the homepage. On the upper right hand side, there's a little like a magnifying glass, a search bar. Type in a subject. See what comes up? I mean, playlists. I've got some, a lot of playlists. I got probably well over a thousand hours of Bible studies. I mean, most of my Bible studies are an hour. Well, I would say, I, I, I don't know about most, but many of my Bible studies are an hour long or longer. I got one that's an hour and 40 minutes on Elijah. Elijah the prophet is life. Uh, I did a, he was my, uh, my uh, master, I think it was a master's thesis in uh, Bible college. I did the whole story, the whole life of Elijah. He's going to be one of the two witnesses that comes back and confronts the beast and the false prophet. And yeah, I know a lot of people tell me that, oh, no, 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 John the Baptist was Elijah. Uh, the Bible says that John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. Elijah never died. And if Elijah did die and came back as John the Baptist, that means reincarnation's true. Come on, give me a break. You know, no. John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. Elijah's coming back. Uh, second witness, some people say Moses, some people say Enoch. I kind of lean towards Enoch, but, you know, other people say Moses. I don't know. We'll see what happens, possibly, if we live that long. I kind of wonder. So, all right, people, this is uh, part one of uh the two sauls and saul to paul uh, i have i've just laid the groundwork now we're going to study the life of king saul king saul started off pretty decent he really did but then he ended up messing up and then you got saul the apostle who became the apostle paul he ended up started really bad and ended up pretty good but you're going to have a, if you uh, hang around long enough, you will find people that will tell you that Paul is not an apostle. They don't believe one word that Paul says. You know, Paul was, uh, 
I think he was the second most prolific writer in the New Testament. I believe Luke was number one, if memory serves me correctly. Luke wrote the book of Acts, if I remember correctly. And Luke was a companion of Paul, if memory serves me correctly. And Luke wrote the book of Luke. Wow, go figure, right? So, um, the book of Luke and the book of Acts are pretty long. But, uh, you know, you throw away Paul, you're throwing away First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Corinthians. Uh, you're throwing away Philemon. You're throwing away Romans. Uh, I mean, come on, people. You know, the book of Romans... How can anybody read the book of Romans and say that that was not inspired scripture? I can't. I, I don't know. All right. All, this is the end of part one. Chaplain Bob Walker uh, signing off. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.